Previously on Starting Over, Maureen returned to the house after her home was destroyed by fire. The house went up, it's smoke, it's gone. Everything is lost. And the tragedy revealed she had buried the grief she felt after her two children died suddenly. It is okay to be devastated by this. Just weakness. Summer practiced her flirting skills, but her low self-esteem continues to keep her from pursuing a healthy relationship. I know how to flirt, so what that means is I can get a guy, but he's only going to want to get laid. And Kim wrote a letter to her sister so she could mend their five-year estrangement, and she hopes her husband's arrival will help her deal with the fact that her sister still hasn't responded. I feel rejected. I have not heard anything from her. A catastrophe it's unbelievable i understand what you're going through it's like a, it's, a, it's a catastrophe i've come here to deal with losing my home i feel guilty about leaving larry and my daughter and my son-in-law to deal with everything at home uh but i know that i would be saying save that melted clock <laughs> you just you don't know what it's like here <laughs> going through everything <laughs> But it's not like the things that are making me sad, you know what I mean? It's just, it's not the things I miss, it's just going with it. That's when I start to cry, you know, I don't cry, I haven't cried over the fire yet, honey. It's just that when I think of it, I think of the Joe and the Linda part of it. I am so glad that we have the opportunity to talk because it's so nice to have comrades to discuss something in great depth so we can help all the women in the starting over house. And I feel like we are getting a second chance to support Maureen in grieving her son who passed away as well as her daughter who passed away. So you feel, Rhonda, she never went through the process? I don't think she went through the process. I think she jokes and she puts a stiff upper lip and then she takes care of everyone else so she doesn't deal with her own feelings. I think she blames herself for their deaths. I think she feels guilty about their deaths. So all this adds up to a Marine who does not move forward. When someone has such a monumental loss, the loss of a child, and, and you know this better than any of us, is it is devastating in cognitive, mm -hmm. emotional, physical, intellectual, spiritual ways, to the yes. point where you feel at that moment like you don't understand even your purpose in living. Yes. But the, the, when you look at the seven sh stages of grieving, the first is shock, mm -hmm. oh, and the second is denial, That's then there's is. anger. I think Maureen is stuck in denial. I think I need to create a very powerful exercise for Maureen to deal with her grief, to face her grief, and to hopefully heal her grief so that she can actually start having her life back. To celebrate her daughter's life and be able to keep that energy of her daughter, but in a healthy way. Any kind of loss has to be experienced in its full range of emotions. Well, that's yes. it. Yes, it Those is. emotions. And I think Maureen's emotions have to be stripped naked. I think that she really needs right now to just unpeel those layers and get down to the very core so that we can start rebuilding yes. her in a healthy way. I wish you were here, but I'm glad that you're not, is all. Yeah, I understand that. And I'm, I, I wish I was there and I'm glad I'm not. But I feel a lot of guilt because I've left it on you and Larry and Steve. I don't want you to feel guilty, Matt. No. Don't feel guilty, okay? Okay. Kara, I think being there and just looking at everything and having to say, oh, my God, oh, my God, and, and you know, like, trash, trash, trash. I think I'd end up in a booby hatch. What? I'd end up in a booby hatch. Yeah. And it's not only be, and not for the things that could be bought again. I know. But for the things that meant so much is there were so many things that were encumbering you in your life that you didn't know how to throw away that are now gone. No decision. <laughs> and it's freedom. And this Rhonda, that the universe is giving you a chance to start over again now. You, you told that to Rhonda? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's pretty, pretty deep. <laughs> I, I, 
I have that feeling too. Let's look at Kim. Perfect example. Never grieved her parents' divorce. And never grieved her relationship with her sister. Mm. But the feelings are still present because even though she never grieved the loss of her sister's relationship, she awfulizes it in her head all the time. How do we support people that we love and care about to grieve? I think that is so crucial. Dave is coming, mm -hmm. which I think gives us an opportunity to have her look at it a different way. I'd like to talk about Summer because I think Summer also has a lot of challenges in relationships. I think that most of the men she's in relationship with, she calls friends. She likes this Ed guy who she met two years ago, who she's only, you know, talked to on the phone, never seen again. You know, she has a crush on Marcus. What up? Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to my home. God, this place is beautiful. It is. Did you meet Maureen? Yes, I did. OK. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to take you around because everybody, this is Kim. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? She's my roommate. I'm going to take you on a tour first. OK, cool. I, I think Summer so painfully wants a good relationship that she creates fantasies. And when fantasies aren't available to her, she creates destructive relationships. And this is part of the 300-pound woman before her gastric bypass. I don't think she feels, number one, that she knows how to have a healthy relationship, that she deserves to have a healthy relationship. And I think part of her self-destructive uh, plan in life was to choose relationships which weren't healthy, which we could only prove that she's right, that she's unworthy. Summer's at a crossroads. In order to break through her inability to have a relationship, I think she needs to know what a healthy relationship is. So I want her to get a male perspective. And who better to ask than her trainer, Marcus? All right, I need to know your best and worst date. Your best and worst date. 13. It's great to have an excuse to ask those questions. The fact that Marcus has no idea that I have this huge crush on him just makes it that much more fun. All right, I need to know your best and worst dating. Your best and worst date. Apparently, they've discovered I'm good at flirting, not dating. How's the sisters doing? Good. Kim, Tawanda, and Jennifer all have sisters with whom they have difficult relationships. So whenever we meet to talk about that, we call ourselves the sisterhood group. Is that what you made? Mm -hmm. Show me. Whoa. You got a picture of your sister. Mm -hmm. So what does this represent for you? Is that, what does that represent? Well, this is my family, and we're a tennis family. My stepfather teaches tennis, and they have a tennis court and a pool. So we used to get together every Sunday and all play tennis, and all the kids and grandkids and everybody went to the pool. And we used to take vacations together, go to the movies. Um, we used to be happy together. Why are you saying used to? Well, because we don't anymore because of the falling out. She's talking out. about that's your vision of things to come. Right. So you have to speak of it in terms of future tense. Oh. So we are playing. Kim, you're looking at me like I'm growing horns. <laughs> <laughs> the way you treat your sister, the way you think about your sister, the way you feel about your sister is an accurate reflection of how you treat, think, feel about yourself at some level of your being. It's true. Kim has a hard time believing anything that will move her forward. For her, it's so much easier to believe those things that cause her pain and create drama in her life. You have to be open to the possibility that this relationship can change. I've been trying to make effort to do that. I sent a letter to my sister Kelly asking her if she was open to a line of communication. And I haven't heard back from her yet, so it's really making me anxious because I'm not sure that I'm going to get a response. I mean, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to look at it differently. I still have reservation, but it doesn't mean I'm not trying. There is no try. There's only do or don't do. Trying. See, that's a trick of the ego. Trying. Either you do it or you don't do it. I am really glad that Dave is coming at this point. I need him desperately right now, especially since I have not heard back from my sister. Marcus, best or worst, whichever one comes to mind. 
Uh, best date? Since Marcus is the kind of man that Summer's attracted to, I think it would be incredibly helpful to her to find out what he thinks is a good dating relationship. Just going out and just being very, uh, I can't remember, just being very natural. Like, not having to, like, put on, like, the guy that you think this girl wants you to be. Because we were able to just hang out and be ourselves and, uh, and be best friends. I think I'm definitely surprised that Marcus's answer is so basic. As women, we spend so much time analyzing and rationalizing our relationships. And to find out that all we have to do is sit back and relax, wow, that's a, that's a whole new concept for me. Worst. Worst, oh gosh. That's probably what it been, I've uh, probably had a few of those in the last few years. Uh, me having to actually, um, be someone I feel like I'm uncomfortable with just to satisfy this other person. That's, I always have this thing with my meeting my representative, being the person that I think this I like other that. person wants me to be. I am thrilled. My husband's coming today, and I'm surprised. I'm a little nervous. Okay, so let's talk about dating. All right. Okay. Marcus's best date was, it was the first time with his girlfriend that they went out and they just went to the movies. You know, it's like, it was no big deal, but it felt like we were best friends and it was comfortable and I didn't feel like if I opened a door for her, she was gonna think I was doing it to win points. And what did you think of Marcus then? Well, fell in love with him just a little bit more. It's so wrong, it's so wrong. Okay, so that is your new phrase when you hear it, think of Marcus. This or something better. God, I want this or something better. Like, I am available and open for a guy like Marcus or something better. The fact that Marcus is in your life mm -hmm. is an incredible blessing. What What is it about him and relationships that you would like to emulate, that you would like to use as a role model? Well, he used the word best friends. So he doesn't, he uses the word comfortable, natural feeling not false, being able to be himself. And that's, those are things, all things that I like. The more I'm vulnerable, the more I'm honest, the more I'm authentic, mm -hmm. the more when you are with me, I will actually feel loved. The more that I hide myself, deny myself, isolate myself, avoid, the more I'll never feel loved by you because I, have more, I, haven't, I haven't shown you me. So what about starting to practice showing you a little bit of yourself? You're good at flirting, we've already determined that. Mm -hmm. What about being willing to have just conversations? Just, you're good at friends. You've said that to me before. Mm -hmm. What about doing a little bit more of that with this new framework, this new attitude? Do I have, about being yourself? Yes. Well, I need to practice that. Great, you're gonna practice tonight. My friend Ed is coming up from San Diego to the Starting Over house to come visit me, and I cannot wait to see him. Ed has not seen me since I've had the bypass. So I'll be interested to uh, see his reaction. I am so nervous. I feel like I'm going on a date. I know my stomach is just, I don't know why I'm so nervous. You are so cute. I think it's adorable. <laughs> uh. Oh, I mean, it's just hard and to And he'll believe. be here soon, huh? Yes. Maybe he could woo yeah. you again. Oh, I think he is. I think he's trying. He's more romantic than I am. Does this look okay with this? Yeah. Shoes. I saw that sitting in the... Oh, yeah. And he's going to be so excited, too. <laughs> yeah, I've lost 10 pounds. My husband is a little bit worried about me being in the starting over house. I think it's a little threatening.
Summer, I'm supporting you and knowing that there's a difference between happy tears and sad tears and mad tears and all sorts of tears. Kim is crying to see him. She's crying. And it's just amazing to me because it's very obvious that they really, really love each other. And it's it's really cool and it's really what I want to have. Did you get to meet Robert? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, come and meet everybody. Okay. I was a little nervous to have the housemates meet Dave. Some of them are a little weary um, with men, but I know how loving my husband is and how compassionate he is. And he's really good with women, so I knew that he'd woo them just like he wooed me. Here's my husband. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Dave, this is Josie. Hello. Hi, Josie. Kim's husband, Dave, is awesome. He's a little bit shy in the beginning. But um, walking into a house with six women would do that to any man. There's Dave! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> How are you? Hi. See, I'm yes. just as handsome as yes. I told you. <laughs> and that's Chloe. That's oh, Josie's baby. Hi. Dave loves kids. How are you? I think that he understands that this will help me being happy. And there's the pool. He is very supportive of me, so he really wants me to experience mm. joy. If I missed your smell. <laughs> so Mo lives in Chicago, so I've already told her when she rebuilds, we're coming out. Now what happened? Did something happen with your house? All of her memorabilia, things mm. that were passed down from her family, all of her collections burned. Oh. And she has lost two of her children, unfortunately. One died of a heart attack, one of leukemia. And so this is just one more loss. Mm. I'm sorry. I haven't cried over it, so. Mm. So they want her to sort of mourn. Every time I cry is when I think about that, then I think about the kids. To lose as many people as Maureen has and to lose a child, I, I cannot even relate to that. As she's grieving the loss of the things that she's built up her whole entire life, at the same time, Maureen needs to grieve the loss of her children. Hola. Hi. Hello. Hello. OK, what do we think of uh, Kim's husband? We love him. He's Sweet. so nice. He really is. Yeah. Doesn't this just make us feel like better about Kim and her life? It makes me feel better knowing that you have this supportive cute husband waiting for you is just makes me feel so much better about your life after starting over. Thank you. Um, how does it feel to have him in the starting over house? I cried when I saw him and I've missed him a lot. So he's very supportive of me so it's nice to have that. In reality how often do you really see true love? Right. True healthy intimate empowering love. And we have gone through it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And it hasn't been a fairy tale. But we've come through it. So how long have you been together? We've worked hard. Uh, we've been together 15 years, married 13. So I even admire your courage more than I had before because it's easy to leave something that you're not necessarily sure you're happy in. But to leave a really happy marriage. Yeah, it was yes. Even you know, even though you know you need to take care of yourself. Yes. To leave that safety and security is very brave. And now that I see how close you two are, it just tells me how much you must have wanted to start over if you are willing to leave your home. Yes. Maureen? Maureen has survived a terrible house fire. And now that she's in the starting over house to heal and rebuild her life, Maureen must start envisioning a new life. Who's that? Linda. Hey, Linda, your daughter. And how long ago did she leave? 14 years. Okay. Have you allowed yourself to grieve and mourn? Not enough. Yeah. The, just the, the, the anger makes me cry. Yes. And then usually I'm in the car or in the shower or something. I, I don't, I don't do it usually in front of people. I'll stop. 
Imagine that you have all this inside of you, like Maureen does. Imagine all this sadness, this loss, this grief, this mourning that's unresolved, that really has not been honored, really. <sighs> not really been honored. I can't even go to the cemetery for more than 30 seconds. Really? Because what, what goes through you? What do you feel? What do you... You're not supposed to be down there. And I know they're here. But I can't touch him and hold him and kiss him and yeah. love him. So has she grieved? No. No. Mm -mm. If you could give her maybe some feedback. Think of it from a loving perspective. What would you want to say to Maureen about her son and daughter who are gone? It's hard for me to even give advice because I can't imagine. To me, that would be the worst thing ever in my life, ever, ever. However, I would hope that I would celebrate their life, not mourn their loss. You know, it's like, it's like I feel like it's this ball inside of you that you're, you've got to protect because if you don't protect your grief, I think you think somehow they're, then they didn't exist. And I don't want them to be dead, so I just try to keep them alive. Yes. for you, Maureen. <laughs> What's easier for you? This is easier for me. Yes, that's easier for you. And having, you know, the little mask of happiness on her, how does that support her or stop her from grieving? It stops her. Stops, it stops her. her because why? Because she didn't, she's not able to she's let it out. behind a yeah. smile. She distracts everybody else from her grief, too. Right. Yes. Okay. Stand up. Well. I'm putting a cloak on her today. We're going to support her and staying cloaked in her grief so that she actually feels it. So your job today is to support her in the grief process. I feel really bad for Maureen that she cannot release some of these tragedies. I don't think that she can have peace and joy and happiness until she is able to release a lot of that. The tragedy face, I want you to write down your losses things that you have to grieve. In order? <laughs> Any order. And ladies, you can help her do this today. I respect Maureen for trying as hard as she does. Pretty much everything that meant something to her, she's lost. And I think, um, if anything, it's going to make her grow and be a stronger person. The only way that that's going to happen, though, is if she actually takes the time to grieve and to honor the things that she has lost. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't stop it. There you, you go. You can't stop it. Don't stop it. So can you be with your grief today? I can be with my grief today. The things that matter the most to me that I lost in my house was in my living room. I had a picture of my parents when they date, were dating, and I had a picture of my father when he was a child. I had pictures of my kids, and it was my family wall, and it was like all of my favorite special pictures. And when I walked into the house four or five hours after the fire, I saw the bottom of one of them laying on the floor, and I looked and I just realized everything that was in this room is gone. There's nothing left. Maureen looks really sad. I think that she is having to really think about all of the grief she's had in her life. And I think this is a tough assignment for her. The red lines in my life were two children. Joe is my oldest boy. First my mother died, then his sister died, and then my father, and he became like the nucleus of the family. He had my sense of humor, he had my stubbornness, he had like a mean mouth when it was necessary, and he had the sweetest ways about him. He was a charmer. Everything was going along beautifully, and then, boom, he was gone. Linda, Linda, she was without a doubt the most beautiful, beautiful baby. She started to read by herself when she was about three and a half or four years old. I caught her reading a book, and uh, she was a bright girl. She wanted to be an attorney. She just slipped into a coma, and then we just held her and held her and held her. 
I just didn't believe that God would take her away from us. So do you have someone special? No. No? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to have someone special. But I always love to hear love stories, so. Oh. When did you know you loved Kim? Well, we were up in Keystone, and it was 4th of July. Okay. And um, so we were sitting there having breakfast. Oh, okay. Remember? And you're supposed to. I leaned over and told her. That was the first time I, I told her I loved her. And this is no exaggeration. As soon as I leaned over to tell her, then um, a cannon went off on the hillside and big boom. And uh, then they there was a, a full orchestra there, and then they started playing the wedding march. Oh, no. As soon as the words left my mouth. No. Yes. And I thought he had planned the whole thing, and he said no, he didn't. Oh, and then balloons and everything went off. Yeah. And that's yeah. at six Fireworks. Months. And fire, yeah, fireworks. It was that's seven, what, that's what oh, it was. Seven, about seven, eight months, something like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think my housemates do see a different side of me, a side that loves a man, that accepts love from a man. I really hope that this helps some of the younger girls seeing a marriage that hasn't always been easy, had a lot of hard times, but still madly in love with each other 15 years later. I'm trying to figure out how people get from, because I can do flirting and I can do the relationship, but it's that middle part where you're trying to figure each other out that I have issues with. Well, I think it's different for everyone, though, too. Like with Kim, I kind of knew even from the very beginning. You know, even from our first date. Where do you fall in love with her? Smile through the eyes. Oh, smile. Because you can see the smile a lot further away from the eyes. That's my guess. Yeah, I like the smile, too, but I like the eyes. It's hard to pick one thing, because I love everything about Kim. Every one of the other. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. That is so I would have to say... I'm so lucky. But you could be the best thing that ever happened to her, too, from what I hear. Uh, well, maybe that's what love is all about. Huh? It kind of works for both people. You know, I think the difference between the guys that I've been dating and the ones that I want to date is self-esteem. You meet a great guy like Ed, and if you don't really believe that you have enough to offer him, you're certainly not going to make an attempt to date him. What's the point? Why put yourself out there just to get your heart broken? Good to see you. It's good to see you. It's been so long. Yeah, how you doing? Oh, good. Yeah. Ed and I met at a conference in Michigan. Ed was a contrast for me. He was what I say I want, but never actually to you. She's like, hey, man. Josie, the Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. I am so nervous. So many things have changed physically for me, and I have this, like, new little seed of confidence, and it's little bitty, and it's trying to sprout, and I really need this to be positive. Look, she's learned to it. Hey. How you doing? I sent a balloon up with an intention on it to open up a line of communication with my sister. It's been a week and a half, and now I have received the letter. I have not spoken to my sister in five years, so I am really surprised that I have received a letter from her. from my sister. <laughs> and I opened it in front of them, and we all read it together. She doesn't want to fight. Yes! She's happy I'm on the show, yes. and she could maybe be in a room with me. <laughs> in a room. <laughs> I'm shocked. I should I'm just... shocked. Why? What is it going to take, Kim? <laughs> Jesus on the water? Why? I, I even said in a room, didn't I? And she said, maybe we could be in a room together. What is it going to take? You need some hey, help there? Baby. Not help thinking. Well, here you got quite a few. I can help you put some of those on. I have to do it just like Kim would, or she'll end up changing these. <laughs> True to myself. 
Dave, Kim's husband, and I are assisting Maureen in pinning her losses on her cloak. And she's written up quite a few. I, I believe it's about 20 to 25. Come on, Express B. anger truthfully. B. That's all. Cool. Yeah, I think I need to do this one better. <laughs> <laughs> Kim C says she'll go, Dave. I'm really hoping that Maureen is able to look at those things specifically and say, yeah, I, I'm really needing to cry about this, or I'm really needing to mourn about that. What color is your surfboard? It is, well, I use what we call the pier. It's blue and white. Well, why is it called a pier? Because it's really long. It's like a pier. Oh, those really big, long ones? Yeah. Why do you use that one? Why do I use that one? Because mm -hmm. it's easy to get up on. Because the smaller ones are squirrely. You'll try to stand on it and you'll fall over. But the pier, you could stand on it and you won't fall over. Gotcha. It's like a pier. Interesting. Kind of self-explanatory. So. Are you calling me stupid? No. It's a lot of fun. You're going to do it sometime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I could get you in the whole ocean. Yeah, well. Baby steps. Him visiting today is its kind of a test for us both. It's just a way for us to hang out and see how we're getting along. I'm working on figuring out exactly what it is that I want and not settling for less than that. And Ed pretty much stands up to the standard. I'll make sure that there's no sharks out there. Thank you. I'm jellyfish. Nah, don't worry about the jellyfish. They're not bad out here. Have a seat. How was it to grieve today, and how successful do you think you were at it? I cried. Because I can put on the smile. But it's not always not, you know, it's just on my face. I think this is just as pleasant as this. I think there are two sides of the same coin. In order to really have happiness, you have to really face your sadness. Yep. <laughs> so what do you want to take away from this exercise? I just want to flush all this away. Ready to burn it? Yeah. You sure? I think so. Because if you burn it, that means you're letting it go, Murray. And that means you're willing to give up the excuses. It's time. Get on with it. Can I take this? Whatever you like. I lost a lot. I lost everything that was precious and beautiful that I was proud of. That's making a good fire. It yes. really is. How do you feel throwing that in the fire? Lots of bull <laughs> just went in there. <laughs> and that makes a good fire, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to celebrate your children? Yes. Ready to realize? Say goodbye. And say you love them? They know it. They know I love them. Do you know they love you? And do you know that they don't blame you? You sure? I think so. So that, is there anything left? Not much. Not much. Ashes. Back to the earth. <laughs> what wasn't in there are the things that I'm gonna start with. So I wanna keep them going and I wanna keep them alive. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Well, it's, a, it's, it's, it's your intention. It's my intention you to be in You set an intention. I did. You're right. Okay? Do you want me to read it to you? No, I want to read it. Because it's hard to, hard Can to I read. read it? Yeah, sure. And you know what? She wrote it authentically. She just ripped it right out of the paper, out of the book. <laughs> mm-hmm. I received your note and had to think on your comments for a few days. It's interesting how brief your request was, and I feel like you're putting me in a position to respond. Mm -hmm. If you really wanted to communicate, why such a brief note? Because why? Why such a brief note? Tell it. Go ahead. Tell it. Tell it. Go. Tell <laughs> on yourself. Just tell on yourself. Afraid of rejection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I respond with a yes or a no, if I do, then I put the onus on you to open the line. Right. What do you hear there? Please listen carefully. She wants me to open the line. No. Did you hear? Did you hear that day? Instead of the onus being on you, you put it on her. Do you get that? She said. That I'm here. putting it on her. Right. Yeah, I get that. So why you? Because it was your heel. Right. 
and you made the first move with a clear intention, and you got just what you intended. That's true. Kim, my wounds go very deep, and they still ache. However, over the last three years, the pain is better. I feel I can be in a room with you without feeling angry. That's a major achievement for me. Communication with you seems pointless. I do not have the strength to deal with you. I don't know if I ever will. There's nothing there about you. That's her stuff. Now, do well, you want to take it on? Yeah, do you want to take it on? I do not have the strength. What a powerful acknowledgement. And what are sisters, Kim? What do sisters do? Forgive. And? Support. You have hurt me most of my life. Here we go. And I have never received an apology or an acceptance of your actions. What does that sound like, Kim? Here we go. Well, she wants an apology. And what do you want? An apology. <laughs> <laughs> and how many times have I said to you, Kim, that what you're projecting out, you you're get open. back. That's right. Are you strong enough to apologize to her and explain to her that you did the best you could? Are you strong enough to do that? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? relationships. I, I, that's what I'm here for. Okay, so do you have the skills that she doesn't have? Yeah. Do you have the tools that she doesn't have? Yep. Do you have support that she doesn't have? Yeah. So the very same thing that you have said to yourself, I forgive myself for judging myself as what? Wrong. I forgive myself for judging myself as? I'm wrong. I forgive myself for judging myself as? I love you. Yeah. Could you ask her to forgive you for those things, too? Yeah, probably. Yeah, because you've already done it to yourself. And once you forgive you, everybody else is just <laughs> gravy on the boat. <laughs> In counseling, you said you hated me with every fiber of your being. Oh, you didn't tell me that, Kim. I never said that. Okay. Well, that's what she heard. And we know that people have a tendency to what? Filter. And hear, hear what they want. Yes. Why has this changed? Why has it changed, Kim? Uh, because I'm taking responsibility. Yeah. And? Because I'm here and I earned my way here. Yes. I hear that she was absolutely blown away by your courage in writing this letter. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to hear that. She wouldn't have responded otherwise, Kim. She hasn't spoken to you in five years. That you took a step and she took a step. You worked hard to get this kid. Mm -hmm. All right. That kept you late enough. Uh, thank you for having me. You can come back and visit me? Yeah, definitely. You just gotta give me a call. <laughs> no, okay. I'll call you too. We're all gone. Okay. I'll see you, girl. You too. Get home okay, safely, please. Okay, I will. Bye. Nine. In the past, I have had these traits that I have wanted in a relationship. And the problem in finding them is just that I didn't believe I deserved them. And as I'm spending more time in the starting over house, I'm just starting to kind of believe in myself a little more and believe that it's not that the traits are unattainable and it's not that there aren't guys out there. It's just a matter of me believing enough in myself to go out and find them. This looks nice, doesn't it? Martini bar. Oh. We love martinis. I'll have a martini. You must have got the right one. Oh, I know. That looks pretty good. Here's to my lovely wife. Thank you, honey. It's so nice to see you. Yeah, thank you for coming. Mm. Even though I have a really strong support system with my family, I am having conflicted feelings about reconciling with my sister Kelly after reading her letter. 
it just feels to me and my husband again that it's just that same old blaming and it's very difficult to make the decision to continue to move forward at this point. I've missed you. Yeah. Yes, I have. This has been harder than I thought. Really? Hopefully you can get these things done and come home. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready for me to come home? Yeah. You're I'm done? I'm ready. I'm, I've been done for a few weeks now. Well, it looks like I have to take you to bed, honey. Yes. <laughs> it's just way past my bedtime. Next on Starting Over. It's time for the The women are pushed to the limit. One. Two. two good. Pop it out. Three. three Eleven. Seven, Twelve. Up. Jennifer's relationship with her sister is put to the ultimate test. I've really been putting off the phone call, so I'm just gonna talk and hope that it all comes out right. And Kim reveals some incredible news. I have to tell you something, T. I've been waiting to tell you this. Guess what happened today? 